If I decide I'm going to draw this particular elk, I have to make sure that it's scaled in the correct proportion. And I use a fairly mechanical way of doing that. There are actually three ways in which you can scale something. The first way is to measure. If I take any particular part of this elk, and it needs to be a fairly short uh, distance and it needs to be fairly straight. So I've got a nice clear one going from the tip of the elk's nose to about that part of his head. I can use that as my scale. And I can say, okay, I'm going to draw an elk and I'm going to use that as my foundation measurement. Now, the next thing I need to do is just put a mark on my piece of paper, roughly the way I want to do it. Okay, so there's the stopping point, there's the starting point, there's a mark on my piece of paper. From that one line, I can scale the entire elk. How can I do that? Well, one way is by using a proportional divider. This is, I talked about proportional dividers. This particular one is quite large. You don't really need to have one this large, but what you do with it is one side moves it back and forth, the other side locks it into place. I take a measurement of the photograph from those two points and I check it to what I have drawn. And if it's not exactly right, I just adjust it until it is exactly right. Now, I'm sure that there's a very scientific way of doing this using these little numbers that occur along here, but that's scientific and it's, it's mathematical and artists are not really good at math and science. You know, we're, we're artists, okay? So we have to keep it fairly simple. So once I have set this like this, so when I turn it over, it is the correct length. And I'm going to just cheat here to save a little time and make my line a little longer. OK, now this is set so that anything I measure with the elk on this side of the proportional divider, this side will automatically scale it. So if I want to know from this point right here down to the bottom of his jaw, how far down do I have to go straight down? It's that far. So there is the bottom of his jaw. Then I just look at that, there's a straight line, comes around and under, and then gets wider, like that. Do I have that part right? Well, again, I can just measure it, and then just check it to see. Yeah, pretty close. I could get just a little bit wider here. And you keep going. Usually what I find is to draw first and then come back and measure. He's got some ears somewhere in this area right here. He's got a, let me get, I'm going to switch sides here so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. He's got a neck that comes down and goes over, and then he's got a shoulder right here. And do I have that length correct? Well, again, I can just correct it and change it by doing a measurement. What we want to do with, with drawing something like this is to make sure we have the correct values, the correct lightness or darkness. And the way we do that is, let's say I want to do uh, some area right in here. I put in enough marks so that I know which way the hair goes. And we want to draw hair by using our pencil tip initially and lifting it at the end of the stroke. When you make a pencil stroke, a line stroke, it's the same width from here to here. But a hair stroke is a lifted stroke. And that's the, what we want to do in doing dog hair. And we use our pencil to comb the dog with our pencil, lifting it at the end. So as we go along, oops, get my hand under here. Now next to this, I'll want to have a darker value. So I can lay that in with pushing on my pencil, going with a 6B or a 8B pencil, and that feels like an HB pencil. So let's go to a darker one and start to lay in some of these darkness, these values. Where it's dark and black on the, the, the uh, drawing, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make it really, really dark. You need to have a whole range of values in order for your drawing to be successful. Now see the hair? 
I can't really, it's really short around there. So I can just lay it in with my pencil. And then once I've started to get it going, lifting it so it blends outward. Then I can go to the paper stump and blend that all together and start to get some of those mid-tones going. Basically what we're talking about here is this is really all dark. It's just a matter of which parts are darkest of the dark. And you can be as detailed or as loose as you want to be on this. It's a matter of personal choice. I mentioned my husband's the uh, more precise person. So he would probably put in every little dot and speck and light and dark and I'm the impatient one. I can use that paper stump to just add a little bit of shading over in there. I got a little bit of a light area there. And if I get any area too dark, I can lift it back out with my eraser or with a pa with dabbing it down with a a kneaded eraser. And get down into here. And I'm kind of thinking things like whisker pads, what do the whisker shapes look like, and moving outward and around the nose. And then this whole side of his nose is, needs to have a little bit of a tone to it because it's slightly shaded. Here's where I want to flatten that paper stump a little bit because I don't want it to be real pointy in one spot. <laughs> 